Hi, everybody. Ronnie Bincer, the Hangout Helper, here to help you learn the roles people play in a Hangout on Air or in an HOA. It rhymes nicely, so roles people play in an HOA. Today, we're going to focus on the technical roles that people play when they're involved with Hangouts on Air. Not necessarily just those on the inside, but that's where the majority of the focus will be. Near the end of the show today, we'll talk a little bit more about people maybe that might be on the outside um, helping produce the thing. So what I'd like to do is get started and introduce my film strip folks, the people in the film strip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over. I believe it's going to be on one end, but because it's a little hard for me, I'm going to start with Andrew. So Andrew, would you like to say hi to everybody for us, please? Morning, everybody. I'm Andy Hatchett. I run the user to user live community, the Mastery Hangout Chat community, and basically live on the computer every day in Hangouts. Thank <laughs> and thank you for helping out, Andrew. It's very, very kind of you. All right, next, I believe next is BL. So, BL, please let us know a little bit about you. Hi. I'm B.L. Ackman, and um, I uh, love this group, and I'm happy to be here, and I run uh, Maximum-Plus.com, which is uh, an event uh, and training uh, for Google Plus company, and I blog at What's Next Blog, and um, I um, am really just thrilled to start any conversation with this group of people. Fantastic. Christopher... Yes, sir. I'm Christopher Vogelman, Dr. V, and I'm the CEO of Epic Win Systems, which is a motivational and behavioral marketing software and consulting business, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Heather. Heather, you're on. I'm Heather Crafter, and I run and operate the Craft Shack. You can find me at craftshack.com or in the crafters community where we are making inky mess and ending our crafty bones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Michael. Hello, I'm Michael Daniels. I help in uh, in this forum in the mastery. I help in user-to-user -user with Andrew. I do a lot of work in helping that. And, and anybody that's new, brand new, or you're trying to get somebody new and you want to do some testing, it's a great threshold and area to do that. In the mastery group, in the mastery chats, same thing there for people that are in there. We'll do that anytime, sit there and do some testing and things like that. Also, I'm affiliated and help with business hangouts as well. So if you're interested in that type of thing too, feel free to do that. Fantastic. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie, for oh, you're allowing welcome. me. You're welcome. Thank you. Nazim, you're on. Hey. Uh, hi, it's Nazim Beltran from Milan, Italy. And uh, I joined the Mastery Group uh, two months ago because I got to definitely get on top of HOAs and uh, I'm in charge of a digital agency, part two digital companies here, part media, and so that dp.com. Fantastic. All right, so here's here's the sort of the rundown. I've got a few screen shares that I want to get into the conversation. It's going to have names of different roles that people play when they're in Hangout and Air, and we're going to discuss those, and we're going to go back and forth a little between the screen share, but the point is there are certain roles that you're going to play when you're inside a Hangout on Air, and that starts, just as a quick one, is the primary person that's pushing the buttons that gets this thing all started to begin with is generally called a Hangout on Air host or an HOA host. And then there's other people that are in the panel or in the film strip. Sometimes you don't have to, but there's also people watching on the outside. So all these people play certain roles and what I'd like to do is start to bring up some of the verbiage that we talk about on a regular basis. So I'm bringing up my screen share option and I've got this loaded, so hopefully my face won't be frozen for too long. And then you can see. So I think right now you probably can see the screen share. The, we've got four bullets. The top one, top two, are HOA hosts. And I've separated them slightly because I do want to point out the top one where I talk about production. This is a technical thing, meaning they're producing the show. They're pushing the buttons. They're making the technical part work. There's another version of an HOA host who might be social, meaning they are helping make sure everything socially inside the Hangout is moving along and they've got somebody else actually pushing buttons. So even though they're both HOA hosts, there might be slight differences. So we're going to discuss those in just a moment. There's also a thing called a, ho a person, a, thing. <laughs> a person called a co-host, 
and there may be someone playing the role of a moderator. So what I'd like to do is bring those concepts to the con conversation and let anybody else in the film strip start mentioning what do you think the roles are of a Hangout on Air host. Anybody? Care to jump in? If not, I'll keep going. <laughs> well, I, I would. Uh, I, I think the host has um, the obligation to make extremely clear instructions, as you always do, Ronnie, for how people can join. And um, in my opinion, and I guess I'm in the minority given most of the shows that take place in most of the Hangouts, in my opinion, uh, I don't think shows need to be scripted, but I think that, that questions and topics need to be discussed and um, outlined in advance. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the things as a, I think as a Hangout on Air host does or should do is at the beginning, even before you go live, there's a time when you should gather all the guests together and say, okay, here's what we're going to be talking about. Here's how I expect it to go. Do you have any questions? And get some feedback. That's what I call or we call the green room. And that's the pre-show green room, and I think that's one of the main jobs of the host is to do that. Other ideas, Michael? Yeah, I think one important thing with as far as a host, just to for knowledge-wise, is that you are responsible for that video. It shows up on your YouTube channel. It is you that is affected by all that. So it's real important that you take control as the host in my opinion. Just just throwing that out there as a little insight. Yeah, very good. Not only are you responsible, but you're legally responsible. In other words, if somebody else in the film strip does something they shouldn't do, like play copyrighted music, you're the one that's getting in trouble, not them. So it is your responsibility to mute them if you needed to, or boot them out, or better off, tell them ahead of time, hey, don't be turning on the TV or letting the radio play or something like that because there are copyright issues when we're doing our live broadcasts. Um, so that's one of the things the host is saying and getting things going. Now remember, pushing the buttons. When I'm doing the hosting, I am also controlling what's called the blue box. When in the film strip, if I want to focus on somebody, like right now I'll focus on Nazim even though I'm talking. He is now, you can wave if you want Nazim, he's now in the main screen. And that's because I clicked him. <laughs> okay, I turned you off. Um, I can control who's visible by pressing the blue box or making a blue box show up inside the film strip. That's one of the roles of the host. Now, we, without getting too techy, we can run these shows as either a profile or as a page. And if you do run it as a page, it is possible for multiple people to have certain levels of hosting control. So it gets a little bit trickier when we start doing things as a page, but it also gives you a little bit more options when you run things as a page. But this is being run right now as a profile, so as the primary Hangout on Air host, I'm the one that controls the camera. Now, have any of you been in shows where the host wasn't controlling it, but somebody else was? Anyone? Actually, two of them, I think. Yeah? Yeah. You want to expound on that a little? Tell us what... I I, it's a it's a dim memory because I've been on way too many hangouts in the last several weeks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, I think that that's something that Russ and um, Pat do in Dear Myrtle, isn't it? Doesn't uh, one of them starts it and the other one is actually running it behind the scenes using, I believe it's Post Studio. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, and um, Russ would brought up a comment since you'd mentioned it right here. He's He's got some names of host, producer, joiners, and viewers. Joiners are the people in the film strip. Viewers are those watching in the community or on YouTube. Um, so we will. I've got a list of other terms that are still coming, but th we were just starting out with with the first few. Also on that initial list, we talked about a co-host. So sometimes I run a show like on Mon every other Monday or every first and third Monday. I do a show called TNT Bootcamp. Tools and Technique Bootcamp, and I co-host that with Christine DeGraff. Now, legally or technically, I'm still the Hangout and Air host because it's out of my account. So I'm still responsible for the content. But she is assisting in the process of the whole show. Nazim, if you wouldn't mind muting every once in a while when you're not speaking, we've got – thank you. Um, so with a co-host situation, you do definitely want to meet with your co-host and work things out ahead of time and say, okay, who's going to do what, 
and who's going to do it when so that you're not necessarily stepping over each other. But once you get a good vibe going between you and the co-host, it should become relatively natural and people just pass back and forth. So what I'll do as a co-host is I will try not to speak as much. Right? I want to give the co-host the option to be able to do their part and introduce their questions to the conversation. So any comments you guys want to bring up about co-hosting? I see, Michael, you've got, I'm going to bring that comment up. This is from Debbie Davis saying that she manages the Craft Shack page and runs the controls while Heather hosts the show. So that's another role, and we're going to talk about that in, in a little bit when we get into some of the other names of that I had listed. So any other comments or thoughts about co-hosting? Yes. Um, I, I co-host the, the Beyond Social Media show with Dave Erickson, and, and if one of us is talking too much, the other one asks the other one a question. You know, just to keep it uh, even, because it's it's kind of hard to know when you're <laughs> going on too long unless somebody tells you. Yeah. And and I think the key here is really to keep things short. And uh, so, as as a co-host, it's it's helpful to have questions ready. Right. Yeah. And backup questions are a great thing in case it sort of has a lull. You can always throw in another question and ramp up the conversation again. There is a technical request that I've had many times by clients, meaning they're saying, okay, we got two co-hosts, how do we share this? In other words, is it going to be on my channel one week, another channel, the other person's channel another week? There are a lot of ways to deal with this. Just realize when you both share the exact same video of your Hangout, you are competing at that point. You're not really helping each other, you're competing because the same video is trying to fight for placement inside the search engines. If you want to do that, you can, but it's highly advised that you change the title, you change some of the technical stuff like the keywords that are being used to help surface that particular video. What I've been suggesting to people lately, which we'll talk about in a minute, is get your video sliced into pieces and then maybe the regular host or the host of the channel gets the live show, but then the repurposed versions goes to the other host, the other co-host. And that's one way to sort of share the value of what it is that you've created. Just different ways to deal with it, but there's no simple way where the live show actually goes to both places at the same time. It just doesn't do that. It only goes to one channel. So another item we had in the very first slide was talking about moderator. What to me a moderator is, the role, and by the way, you might play all of these roles, just one person playing all of the roles. I'm just giving you the idea that it's it's possible to be split amongst multiple people, but these are basically the kinds of roles that I think people play in a HOA. So if you're a moderator, one of the roles or the purposes of moderator in my mind is when the conversation starts to lull you, you pep up, you bring in some more questions, you change the conversation, or as BL had mentioned, if someone's taking too much time, then you try to interrupt them politely and let somebody else have some time. So think of a moderator almost like a political debate, right? You're able to stop one and have the other start, and you have to learn a skill to do that appropriately so that it doesn't look like you're really heavy-handed, but it is something that, that you need to work on. Anyone in the film strip have any questions or comments on the moderator role? I, I think also that, that that person could help moderate the comments, too, within like an event or something. If, if someone's doing a spam situation with pictures or whatnot, that person could be given certain um, abilities, if you're using a page anyway, that they could remove those things. So I think that would be beneficial to some of the events that I have watched. And here's a comment from Kellen saying, Joy, business manager manages behind the scenes stuff and passes paper with a note on it telling you to shut up. <laughs> and she does that really well, by the way. Does she? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So um, another one here, all right, from Heather, I'm bringing this one up, is from Lita. I, I'm not sure if that's pronounced right, but we have just completed the first HOA, and it's loads of fun, or it was a load, load, it's load of fun and challenges. How to stay natural within the room, how do you guys do this? Um, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good one. Staying natural, I think, comes more easily the more often you do these. Um, the other thing that helps, honestly, a lot is training yourself to look at that camera. When you look at the camera, you look like you're engaging the people. The normal 
process most people get drawn into is looking down at the film strip like this. And then it doesn't look like you're actually watching or interacting. You should try to train yourself to look at that camera. That makes things more natural. Michael, you're smiling. Yeah, you're one of those that... I I'm very much guilty as charged. <laughs> but it, it's just, it's a process. You do go through it, and I think the more you do these, the more natural you're going to look. Now, it's very possible to train yourself by doing unlisted hangouts on air, which means you don't have to do them publicly. You can get in with a group of people that you're planning on doing this with and do some practice. Everybody then gets to look at the video that it made. Nobody else outside of who you share the link with gets to see it, and it's a wonderful way to practice while being live without everybody having to see it, and then you can go back and critique and improve. So I think that's another good way to improve. So that, let me go ahead. That's probably the most overlooked training tool that people fail to use. Yeah, it's, the it's, it's a private hangout practice by themselves or with others, either one. You know, they'll, they'll attend other hangouts, but they won't set them up for themselves and record to see how they look. I mean, some people do, but the majority of people don't. And it's really a great tool. And, of course, if you locate your camera down near your film strip, then you can do both at the same time without looking like what you're doing. Yeah, it's, right. All right, Christopher, I'm bringing up the comment you have highlighted. Is there room for a role in the comment stream? i.e. someone who gets the comment ball rolling, asks questions when there's a lull, etc. So the comment stream, meaning the written text and things like that, there definitely is, and that's on my list. I'm calling them a non-video guest. That's a phenomenal place for you to be able to become engaged inside Hangouts on Air without ever even needing to be inside the film strip. It's, it's really hard to underemphasize or overemphasize the value that you can get from being in an event regularly showing up and starting to interact with people because you literally are almost as visible as the people inside the film strip, at least for the people that are there live. And it's a very, very important role. Can I say something about the comment tracker? Sure. Um, watching it here, if you want us to pick up your comments, please you have to keep them short so they'll fit on the screen. There are some people writing essays in the comments, you know who you are. Please break, <laughs> please break your questions up into short ones or point, you know, one at a time. Yeah, good point. Let me move on to the next set of um, of names, and we can always revisit some of the the roles that we're talking about in case we need to go back there. So here comes another screen share. I'm giving it just a second for it to show up, and I think you can see it. These were the ones we just discussed: the HOA host, both production and social roles, co-host and moderator. I'm going to move to the next set where we talk about you can be a director and this is something I just wanted to fill in there and we're not probably going to talk a lot about it. It's a very technical role where you may not even be visible on screen but you can try to direct the process of what's going on. There are I would like to say something to that Ronnie if I could because there yeah. is somebody that we know, uh, John Harris, or sorry John Harris, no it was John Brown who actually that is what he does. He, he is the director behind the scenes and never actually goes on screen. Okay. Um, and uh, there, there are certain tools, and we could maybe discuss what he, what tools he uses to do that. One that's pretty popular, but actually, let me rephrase it, is a good tool, but it's not as popular as it should be. It's called Pro Studio, and Pro Studio allows you to do some of these extra heavy-duty director kind of things while not even necessarily being visible. Um, then we've got another role called a wingman or an assistant to the Hangout on Air process. There's a comment wrangler. As you might guess, that is involved with bringing comments in. And then there's film strip or panel guests. You're either a film strip guest or a panel guest. It just depends on the terminology that you are used to using or wanting to use. So those are some more topics to talk about. Let's talk about the director role. Um, those that are using the, the director method, do you know what, what tools they're using? Like, Kat, um, Heather, do you know the process that they're doing or are they using Pro Studio? Well, I know, I know that he used some sort of um, switchboard, but you know, to be honest with you, I'm not that technical if you okay. haven't guessed, so That's all right. I all wouldn't. Right. Now, there, just as a reminder, this broadcast thing we're doing is what we're using is a Hangout on Air. There are YouTube live events that also get much more technical and much fancier where you can get much more into the Pro Studio, pro professional studio type thing where 
you've got loads and loads of tools. That's not what I'm trying to talk about here. That's a whole other world for live streaming events. And what I'm trying to focus on, though, are the tool sets you might use for these relatively simple, if you want to call it that, Hangouts on Air. These are much simpler than the live stream that you would do from within YouTube. Have so, any of you used Minicam? I don't, but I do know of people that do. Or um, Cam Twist. These are other ways to show particular things on screen without going to that full end of the wire. Uh, what Wirecast is another program that's used inside that realm of the um, live Can I event. Can I make a quick uh, comment or suggest it, it, the director's role that you're talking about, does a video background help in the, in the sense if you've been doing video stuff or if you're a video type tech person, does it make a difference for that sort of role? Certainly, yeah. I mean, the, the more, in other words, if you have real life experience and you're bringing it just into a different tool environment, then you don't have to learn as much. You just simply learn the tool, and then you've got the ability to bring in what you've already known from your prior experience. So definitely, I would think that. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and just storytelling, right? You, when you are doing a broadcast, you are telling a story. So if, as a director, you're thinking to yourself, you're storyboarding in your mind. That's a term that's used out in the director kind of world. You can say, we're going to start with this, we're going to go to that, we're going to transition here, and if there's a question, we might go back to that, and then eventually we end up with this. So all of that mindset is really helpful to bring in to one of your roles while you're creating this show, honestly. So another one we talked about was a wingman or an assistant. And Michael Daniels has been helping me for, I'm going to say years at this point, I, I don't remember, it seems quite a while. And he's a phenomenal job of being a wingman and he's bringing in extra value to the host in multiple ways. And one of the ways is I sometimes, I didn't do it today. Sorry, Michael, I forgot. I would pass over the thing called a control room, which is a Hangout on Our app, which allows Michael to mute or unmute other guests. So while I'm talking, if it gets really noisy somewhere else, I don't have to you know, ask someone, can you turn your mic off? Michael can, boom, do it and just take over there. So that's a role that the wingman does. Michael, do you want to tell us some more ideas of what the wingman does? I can inject him. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, well, a lot of times I, I'm trying to just fill in anything that, that maybe the host misses or something. A lot of times, I'll like like you saw me today where I added in the YouTube video into the link. It's just a habit that I got into helping you wait, wait, out. Wait, wait, you went, you oh. went too fast. What did you do? Dude, I know you helped out, and I want people to know what you did. I went that. to the Where Am I app. I got the YouTube link, I entered it into the stream, so anyone mobile could actually get that and use that link to get in and watch it on the YouTube side, that kind of thing. So that's right. Thing yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of setup, in essence, and you might have 15 things to do, and you may have forgotten, thir you've done 13, but you forgot the last two. The wingman's there to cover you and yep. make sure that you've covered them all, or just do them for you if you can't. And a lot of stuff with the comment tracker. I mean, that's a lot of what I do. I try and get that set and put up and things like that. So that's a lot of my of, of what my role is. And a lot of times when I'm helping you, I'll watch the stream as well. Because by watching both of them, I can watch the video that's going on as well as the comments. And sometimes I like to see the delay. If there's any delay between the comment tracker and that, I get to pinpoint and get that out too so I can look for something that I see is coming up. Or respond. A lot of times, I'll respond out there too if I feel like I can answer it. Whereas we may, we're all, we're trying to stay on subject. I can answer their question and help that out that way. So I do a lot of things like that as far as a wingman. But great, yeah. As the host, I one of the at least my role right now, the host, the moderator, the director, all these things I'm doing. I want to keep the story going and exactly. having, a wing, having a wingman be able to bring extra value to the comments by typing in there an answer to someone that needs an answer right now because they're needing it or whatever. Or knowing that there's going to be a shift to the conversation coming because there's so much momentum out there with the comments. That's another role that the wingman can bring in. But you, you went right into the idea of bringing comments. So the comments can be done by, like we said, it, you might be playing multiple roles. Mm -hmm. Okay. The comment wrangler is the term that I've thrown out there for someone who's grabbing all these comments from wherever they are and addressing them and one of the most valuable things is what I'm going to do right now and I'm going to point to Christopher 
he's got a comment up. He says, storytelling is key. People love to take a journey. Thank you, Christopher. Now, what Christopher did is he found, using the tool called a comment tracker, a valid and viable comment to bring onto the screen. He put it on visible on top of his face so that I, when I'm looking down at the film strip, can say, you know what, there's a comment. I'm going to highlight it. BL's doing it right now, so I'm going to bring that one up. This is from Kristen saying, I need to learn more about being a wingman. Any takers to coach me from zero to wingman hero? And I, I would say, sure, there's lots of people, especially in the mastery group. You can ask in there. There you um, go. I'll I'm be glad here. to. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we will we'll we'll do the best we can because I know you're also in the mastery group, so you can just ask the question in there. You'll get people to help you. The point is that the comments are you out there watching live? We want to bring you into the show because there's not enough room in the film strip. This is the way to bring interaction, live interaction with the show. And to me, one of the things that makes Hangouts on Air so incredibly awesome is the interactive element. My friend and person that I really admire from the very beginning of Hangouts on Air is Sarah Hill. She coined the phrase, people yelling at the TV. I want you to be able to yell at the TV, and then we can yell right back. We can talk right back. It's an incredibly valuable way. The comments are how we do that, and some people use a QA and a app. I don't personally like that, but if it works for you, go for it. I prefer what we're doing right now is letting the comments come right onto the screen so they're now part of the video. What does this do for you? It allows you to be part of the show. What's it do for me as the host? It allows you to become a fan because now you've been part of the show. And as a result, you'll tell more people and you get more audience and it all just works out for everybody. So that's what I think a comment wrangler helps you do is find these comments. Multiple people in the film strip can play the role of a comment wrangler, which is now Christopher did it, BL did it, now Heather's doing it, so I'm going to highlight what Heather's got. This is from Lita saying, one more question, how do we keep the film strip down at the bottom and not cut us off while we're speaking? One person had a hard time lip reading because the film strip was covering part of our faces. Um, part of that has to do with the technical size of your window. If you shrink the window down too much, when you're inside the Hangout interface, those thumbnails will cover up some things. But I'm not sure if the question has to do with the recorded or the broadcast version. That might have something to do with the film strip, I'm sorry, the um, lower third being too close instead of actually the film strip. So if I were talking, it's hard for me because I've done it so much the right way. If I was talking down here, I'm eating my lower third. Um, you just want to make sure that there's enough space above what graphics you put. Yeah, Michael, nice job. Um, here, let me highlight Michael so everyone can see. There you go. He's uh, beyond eating his lower third. He's hiding <laughs> behind it. Good visuals, Michael. Thank you. So I'm not sure if exactly that was the answer to the question we're needing, but hopefully it gets you closer. We'll cover it more in comments later. BL, you had a question. I do. Um, I, I want to go back just a little bit. Um, increasingly, I've been bringing people into Hangouts who are not used to doing them. And, and I think as, I'm not sure who the host, the wingman, whomever, it's helpful to have a real list of um, how to prepare for this. You have it, and I think we all should use that when we invite people into Hangouts, particularly in client situations. It, it's just it's hard for people. They're, you know, we're, we're taking this for granted now because we do it every day, but when you don't and when we first started, it, it, it was not so easy. So you know, just all of the steps, turn off Skype and you know, all of these things that you really do need to do, restart your computer, blah, 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 you know, it, it helps people to have that written. Somehow they don't hear it. Yeah, good reminder. And people learn different ways. So a video telling you, like I made a video how to be a good hangout on our guest and I try to encourage people to watch that before they come in. And when I do private meetings, I even send that when I know somebody's really new to Hangouts, I'll even send them that video and say, before we do our meeting, so you can get the most out of it, watch this video because it'll help you through that. And so there's different ways to try to help, but it's a good, it's a good reminder. Now, here's what we're doing right now. Everybody in this Hangout that's live inside the video room is what I call a film strip guest. Some people call it a panel. These people are playing the role and what I'm trying to do is let them have their time to speak and get their face time and so one of the jobs of the host 
is to try to realize, you know what, the personalities, and here now we're going to get a little bit into the social side, the personalities of the people in the film strip sort of need to be known by the host because someone might be quiet because that's their nature. They just want to be quiet, but they do want to be part of it. Someone else might be quiet but are just really, really wanting to say something, and so it's really up to the host to try to figure out which one is in what situation so that we can let them have the face time that they want or when they want. And what I do at the beginning is I encourage everybody to mute at the beginning, and then when they really want to say something, unmute. And that's sort of a little tiny visual clue for me to know that they might want to be saying something. And so since Heather has just unmuted, I'm going to ask, Heather, is there something you want to add? No, there isn't. Then, okay. And I don't unmute. See, I have a I have a quiet button, so you never see uh, that. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, on another, on another note, uh, I was wondering, the salary range for, for a wingman, I'm just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> the salary range for a wingman. Um, I, that's, that's a good question. It, Let's I don't talk know. off camera, Nazim. Let's talk <laughs> off camera. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there, yeah. The, the, the pricing of roles and things like that, I think, is probably best left to more private conversations, honestly. It, it's going to depend on the market and all kinds of things like that. So, BL, I'm going to bring up the comment you've got up there. This is from Kellen saying, nothing substitutes for practice. Private ones, walk your clients through it, then do your public stuff, basically. So, great, great comment, great reminder. Thank you for bringing that out from there. Um, here's John saying that Michael Daniels can run but cannot hide. Okay, he can hide below the film strip, but he, he's still visible. We can still see him. Okay, so... Well, Ronnie? Yeah. Can I make one comment? Please do. You can help any hangout that you host, if you let, particularly with newbies, if you explain to them the importance of muting at all, at all times, and if somebody else has the power to mute them and they do mute them, don't be offended by it. Mm -hmm. It's done because there is distracting sound and it's for the benefit of the entire production and panel. It's not aimed against you. You may not be aware of the noise, but others are. They can take action to prevent it. Don't take it as, a, as an insult because the host or the moderator meets you all of a sudden. You may have a fan going that you don't pay attention to, but it's distracting everybody else. Very good point. Yeah, muting is a very important role, thing to do if you're in the film strip. If at all possible, you stay muted until it's time for you to speak because sometimes, just as, again, I teach people hangouts, so sometimes I forget that we've, We've gone through two and a half years of teaching, and sometimes you might be brand new to it. Sound can cause the main camera to switch to you. So if the phone rings, it will bring you right onto the screen, and you didn't want to be on the screen. If the host is not controlling the camera by plucking, pressing what's called the blue box and then moving from person to person, then when that sound happens, it's going to grab the main window, and that can be very distracting besides the fact that the noise can be very distracting. So being muted is a definite suggestion that will be making your shows more professional. I'm going to bring up this comment from Kristen. The Q&A app is such an enigma. I know Google spent money and time on it, but I can't figure out any value it affords. Um, I have my own thoughts on this, so we'll see that in a minute. Outside of this Hangout and Air, would anyone be interested in the pros, cons conversation I always want to support Google, and I'm, and I can't read the rest of it. Um, the point of the Q&A app, it's a very valid app. It's very good technically, but it's very poor socially from my perspective. Um, and I'll just give a quick rundown of what it does without getting too far into it, because the Q&A app is something that's real easy to use, because there's a button. You click it, and boom, it's on. And if you didn't mean to do it now, you're stuck. It takes over the whole screen. It covers up the event. So all the interaction with the comments tends to start to dwindle or disappear because people can't do that while the show's live. And also the questions or the comments get stuck in it. So when the show's over, you can't easily pull them out and then address them. They are now part of that app. And if you didn't address them live, it's gone. Now for some people, I've seen it work really well. There's a guy who does car talk and he just loads it up, and people have all these questions, and he goes boom, 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 he answers them, answer, 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 answer. So it's truly 
for questions and answers, not for comments. And that's where people get confused. People start to use it like it's a commenting place, and it doesn't work as well for comments. So, but yeah, we can go into more detail of the Q&A about app later. Um, let's move on to some more roles. Oh, wait, BL's got one up here. Let me bring that up. It's from John Harris mentioning Heather. Can you share with us the mute button you are using? I use a unit called cough drop, but it only works as, a, as long as I'm stepping on the button. Heather, do you want to say anything about your quick mute button? It's it's just in line with my headset. I do have a headset on. Not everybody can always see that, but I do have a headset on. It's just in line. That's all. And it has right. a mute switch Great. and a volume control. I have the same thing on mine, which is why I still continue to use a headset, even though I've got other microphones. This is the quickest way for me to get ready to cough. I just push it, and I'm muted without having to push any other buttons anywhere else. So that's one reason why I continue to use a headset, even though I have other microphones that I do test and utilize. So good question. Let's bring. Let's go back to the screen share and look at some more names of roles that people play in an HOA. So there we go. We had director, wingman, comment wrangler, film strip, or panel guest. Now let's talk about some other guests or other methods, other roles. Featured guest. You might be a featured guest, and we'll talk about what that is in a moment. You might be an interviewer or an interviewee. Or what's very valuable, you guys out there that are commenting, a non-video guest. So let's talk about what those are and how they work. The featured guest, I'll give a simple example. David Amerland writes a book about Google Plus Hangouts on Air for Business. Okay, If I'm going to do an interview with him, he's the featured guest. I might have other people in the panel, but they're not the featured guest. David is. So if we need to slow down or back off on some of the commentary from the comment, the, the, the other people, not David. They're not featured. I need to focus on the featured guest. So that's one of the roles of being in a Hangout on Air is being that featured guest. You are, I don't know how to say it otherwise, featured. It's you. It's your show. It's all about you. It's about your book, about what you've done. The people in the film strip are here to promote and support but not take over. And that's... Again, we're talking about the social aspect. We will move more and more into the social thing. In fact, let me just talk about it for a second. We're going to do a follow-up show to the roles people play in a Hangout on Air on the 9th of May. It's Friday. So there'll be another version of this, but we're going to get a little further away from the technical and more into the social roles that people are playing when they're in the film strip or on the outside and all those things. So we do have another follow-up scheduled. I just haven't posted it yet, okay? We got some, I want to give you time to talk about the technical thing. So featured guests, anybody have comments about what they've seen work well with featured guests in Hangouts? I've, I've seen a lot of them where you only have two people and then they open up the film strip or they open up comments at a later time. Right. Maybe that's more of a strategic uh, way of doing a Hangout. Yeah, do, and just as a tip with the two-person hangout scenario, when you do just two people, you never see the film strip. So everybody's full screen the whole time. That's something that's slightly different than when you're doing what we're doing now where you have at least three or more people. So when you get the third or fourth or fifth, then the film strip starts to show up unless you're really techie and go to the cameraman tool and turn off the film strip, which you can do so that everybody can be in this conversation but they're all full screen and you never see the, the film strip. Personally, I don't like that. You know why? Because I like seeing people in the film strip saying, ooh, 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 I got to say something. Even though they haven't said anything yet, this interaction part is, again, one of the things I really value about Hangouts on Air is the ability for it not only to interact with people on the outside, but also on the inside without them having to say anything because Michael might be waving his hand saying, I, I got to say something. But you don't see that on the outside, so you're not like as interactive with the show, unless the film strip is visible. Okay, so other. No, we just we just did this on Tuesday. Can I interrupt you? Please. <laughs> we just did this on on Tuesday yesterday uh, with my show. The very first time I've had a real guest, somebody who was a featured guest, come onto my show. It's always been Debbie and I up to this point. So, so we had um, we had a guest on, and it, and he was featured. And like you said, it was about him. So we did make him the you know the blue boxed version of the whole show, and 
we hid the screen or our film strip so that way his full screen could be shown. But mine's a more visual show than just talking heads. So that's you know, again it goes back to the story you want to tell. Right. You were you were you were helping people find their crafting bone, is that right? Well, yeah, sort of. With an iPad. With an iPad okay. Yeah. Let's talk about blue boxes just for a second, because if you are bringing, let's say I'm bringing in David Amerland and he's going to do our be our featured guest. If I blue box him the whole time and other people are asking questions of him, that is one valid way to do it, but it's also a little awkward when there's a lot of questions by multiple people. So I might blue box him and let someone else ask a question, but if the question goes on for quite a while, it's probably wise to let that person asking the question have some visual space rather than David sitting there wondering, okay, Yes, I can answer that, but he's got to wait. And so the idea of blue boxing is very valid, but make sure you know what you're doing when you're doing it because I've seen many people make the mistake by clicking clicking and leaving that blue box on the whole show and they don't even realize it. And Michael has something he wants to bring up. I just, I just want to say, I, and, and I'm glad you brought it up, that's another thing as a wingman why, I, remember I said that I keep the thread and I can see the video going, so I can help the, the host also for that exact reason, I forgot to mention that one, but thank you. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Can I ask Can I ask a quick question? What about people coming into film strips late? You know, there's some shows that I see people coming in and all of a sudden joining. Is that something that is enjoyable per se, the, the, the impromptu of somebody coming in to the show a little bit late? Not because they've got a delay, but just to wait for it. Is it better just to have everybody nicely organized and put uh, into position? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I, I have a perspective, but I'll share it and let others comment on that in just a moment. So, okay. um, Actually, let me share it right now, I guess, we just so we don't lose too, too much of the conversation. You can, as a technical host, set up what's called a cameraman app so that when people do arrive, they are hidden and muted from the video. So whenever they arrive late, no one even knows they're arriving late except those in the film strip. They can then get their headset ready, they can make adjustments without anybody even hearing it or seeing it. And then when it's appropriate as a host, you can say, and we just had a feature guest join in or whatever. And then you can make it actually seem like it's on purpose. And that to me is a better way to go about managing when people are not showing up on time. You can allow them to come in late and you can make it seem like it was actually on purpose. Great. Okay. And... Um, Michael, I'm going to highlight the comment you've got, which is from Russ saying, two-person HOA is great for interactive training tool. Definitely. Interactive training tool meaning they're getting trained, but they also get a video of the training afterwards. This is something I do regularly when I meet with my clients, is we do private hangouts on air, which are just usually two people or maybe a smaller group of people, and then they get a video of our training session. That's part of the value that we, off we can offer as a consultant or as a coach. BL, I'm going to bring up your comment you were bringing from Wayne, saying he thought about using signals like a baseball coach. Like that, Michael? Um, <laughs> wanting to know, because Michael does a lot of work with baseball, so that's why I brought up his name. He's also great at helping people with these signals. So like a baseball coach wanting to um, get that particular part of, you know, like, you got a special coach, or you got a special signal. You got this means something, that means something. We got five minutes left to go before we're shutting off. That kind of thing. So yeah, signals are are great to bring in visually. And if others are watching from the outside, they see in the film strip, they kind of get a feel for where they are in the show. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, I should practice what I teach though, because Heather was in a hangout with me, and she was giving me all kinds of signals, and I was just like blowing through it, so I should really practice what I preach, but uh, yes, it, it works really wonderfully if you do have certain things that you can do. So, Okay, now we had just done recently, in fact, we did a show on it last night about mobile Hangout on Air. When you are on the road and you're using a cell phone or a mobile device like an iPad or a tablet, you can bring in the visuals remotely, like you're a remote reporter. So in that sense, you might end up being the person with the microphone interviewing someone. So the idea that we can do it within the Hangout on Air, if we're all sitting around in here, that's one thing. The other is you might actually be standing on the street with a camera, I'm sorry, with the microphone, someone else has a camera pointing at you, your, the phone, and then you're talking to somebody and you are truly being an interviewer 
inside a Hangout on Air. You're also potentially being the interviewee inside the Hangout on Air. So that's why I listed those two as potential options. Don't think it has to happen just with mobile. I can be interviewing an author that wrote the book. Again, you know, we'll bring up David or whoever. We just bring in the ability to do interviews. And as any good interviewer, you probably want to have a list of questions. And it's between you and your interviewee as to whether they get to see those questions because you might want it to be, you know, sort of surprise or you might want them to be able to prepare. It just depends on the type of interview that you're doing. Anybody in the film strip want to come about making interview type shows? Because this is pretty common on Hangouts. Well, I did see something recently with David Amerlin in his book tour. And there was one particular host who had the camera focused. He was blue boxed almost the entire time. The host was, or was Dave, or the David? host was the host was, yeah. which was seemed really pretty awkward for David. I'm that thinking was probably it was, a mistake. Yeah, it was yeah, probably a mistake. I would mentioned so. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah, I know. But, I saw that show too. Yeah. But when when you're doing an interview, if you run shut, run out of questions and the comments aren't coming in here, then one idea is to just end the show. <laughs> okay? It's okay to end it even if it was supposed to go an hour, but you've kind of run out of questions, shut it down. There's no reason to keep it going and just yeah. blah, blah, blah. As opposed to using your Barbara Walters questions, like if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? <laughs> and did you make any sound if they, shut, if they cut you down? Exactly. <laughs> so um, let's talk about um, the non-video guest role. And I really, really like this idea because to me, as I'd mentioned before, the idea of you being outside the film strip yet still able to be part of the show is incredibly valuable. And we're going to bring up a comment from one of the non-video guests. Right here, Debbie Davis saying, I couldn't find the hide a guest from the film strip function in Cameraman, but I did find it in the, it's called Pro Studio. Um, it's in there, it's called hide from, I can work with you inside the mastery group if you want, but the, it basically is called, um, I forget the technical name now. I think it's hide from film strip or hide from broadcast. I think it says hide from broadcast. That's something that I'll, Maybe I'll take a screenshot of it and show it inside the mastery group so people can see it. But the non-film, the non-video guests play an incredibly valuable role. That's you out there because we get to see your comments because we're using the tool, the comment tracker tool. It allows us to bring that in, and we bring you right onto the screen. Very, very valuable. Anybody in the film strip care to discuss your roles when you're outside versus on the inside? It's, a, it's, it's probably my favorite role, actually, being the NVG. Okay, Christopher. I, yeah. I, I have to agree on that, too. It's a huge role, which I enjoy, because there's variations on the theme, and you end up really going and adding a lot to the show, and that's part of the big engagement that, that it occurs inside an HOA, in my opinion. Heather. Yeah, and I was going to say, as a host, uh, you know, for me, having the NVGs out there commenting and participating is what makes the show keep going and what makes you want to do it again next week. So I think their role is invaluable. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be doing a show, to be honest with you. Yeah. The fantastic feedback that we get as a host allows us or encourages us to want to keep going. And if it's not good, you tell us. And eventually that decides to whether the show needs to die or something like that. So it's a very valuable role that you play on the outside. and from a networking perspective, we're actually going to be doing a show coming up Monday about does being involved out, I think it was Monday, I, I've got so many coming <laughs> up. Uh, the idea is can you get better search results by interacting with people in the, film, in, in the uh, event comments area and also can you start to work with influencers based on your interaction? So it's very common nowadays, at least inside the Google Plus circles, that was a pun, I didn't mean it, but inside Google Plus, to be doing shows on Hangouts on Air. And if you're a subject matter expert and you're an influencer, there's a very good chance you're going to be being interviewed or you're going to have your own show or a combination of those things. It is very possible to get on the influencer's radar by adding a bunch of useful, thoughtful comments during a show, after a show, 
and that non-video guest role. I think it's incredibly valuable, and I think a lot of people overlook that that is one of the best ways, in my mind, to start to get on the radar of an influencer so that little by little you start to get more connected with them, and eventually you start to build a relationship, and that can lead to many other things, not only good relationship with the influencer, but also helps you with what's called authority and your search engine results and all this stuff that a lot of people involved with marketing are needing to know about. So it's an incredibly valuable place for you to be interacting with a show, even though you're not in the film strip. Any right. comments? Yeah. I have I want to jump in real fast because you have to repeat something you said. Yes. You said something very specific that needs to be repeated and it had to do with Value? the comments being valuable. Okay. Yes. Could you could you please repeat that? You bet. <laughs> Um, if you are, if your goal is to get on the good side of the people in the film strip as well as anybody else in the event, adding idiotic comments is not to your benefit. In other words, stupid comments is just not the thing to do. If you add value, or for example, here's an idea of value. If I'm talking about a book, and you can bring in a link to that book, or if I'm talking about a certain tool and you know where that link is, you can bring that into the conversation so that the rest of the people that are part of it can see it real time pretty much with what I was saying. It keeps me, the host, from having to go add that in later because you did it. That is a cha-ching. There's some value right there that I just got as a host by you, the non-video guest. So that kind of value is really helpful. That I see Heather's happy with that experience. I would like to add, though, if you are able to entertain an influencer, they will respond. Yes. We are no. good at that. Um, I, I just want to ask whether um, you have advice for people, Ronnie, on how there are so many hangouts, there are so many events scheduled, how to find them, how to sift through their value. The value of the hangout or the value well, of the well, comment? Start with how you find them. I know Andrew does every day. You know, these three may be of interest, but there are hundreds every day. So how does one keep track of them? And, you know, when you look at them, how do you really determine whether they're worth your time? That's a great question, and I don't have a phenomenal answer for that. I still think that there is, and there's going to be more and more coming. Um, so you're going to have a lot of people doing a lot of shows, and they might end up being an hour long, and that's a lot of time to dedicate to try to figure out if it's something you want. So I've got some other roles that we're going to talk about. In fact, I'll probably bring those up in a moment as to how people that are doing their shows can add additional value after the fact so that you can get a feel for what that show's like. And then the next version of it, you will have a better idea whether it's something you want to go for or not. Heather, did you have a question to bring in or comment? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Mark Sadell runs a like a TV guide almost to HOAs that are going on, and and it's for anyone who does run an HOA, they can actually, you know, put their show there for free, and put a description to it and everything. I don't have the blog or the website right off the top of my head, so I will look for that right after the show, and I will post it in the in the comments. It's HOAshows.com, I believe. Bingo. I think that's right, yeah. yeah. Um, one thing that I do, how I get my information, is I have memberships in 60-something communities. Anybody that runs those communities, anytime they're doing an event, I usually give them an invitation. I mark it maybe. Then I can go in and look at my events use the snippet put tool, clip those for that day, and post it up. And anybody that is a member of either one of my communities, if you're doing an HOA, send me an invitation, and I can get your event up into that daily thing that I post every morning about these events are being held today and may be of interest to you. But that's, that's the quick and dirty way that I do it. Okay, I'm going to bring up Jim Shankle's comment, and then we're going to go to the last screen share, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. So Jim is pointing out the non-video guest, the NVG engagement, gives good value in improving Plus My Reach metrics. Now, there's a relatively new tool called Plus My Reach where you can, in essence, measure engagement and reach of your Hangout on Air activity. And he's just pointing out that when you are plussing and commenting and sharing, these do bring value to the metrics that will 
bring value in essence to the show when you get right down to it. Okay, so let's um, let's go back here, get to the last frame. We just talked about these. We're going to go to one more area, and this has to do with some things that are not necessarily as obvious, but they are very valuable still. If you can help schedule, you might be a person that's setting up who the interviewees are when you're when you're helping the main host or something. A scheduler is involved. Someone is helping book people. This was really handy when you're doing mobile things because if you're out there running around, it's good to have someone to help set up who's going to be interviewed next, who you're going to see next. That's a great role to play for a Hangout on Air. When you do these things as events, you're going to want to have some graphics ahead of time so that the banner looks nice or the trailer graphic looks good. So we want to utilize graphics or graphic artists. After the show, some of the great stuff you can do is timestamp, which means take your show, cut it into, or sorry, the bottom is cutting it up, the video editor. Let's go back to timestamping. This gives you sort of a table of contents or an index that's clickable. That means it's easier for someone to zip through an hour show and get to the specific parts that they want. Very, very valuable. This will help people decide, you know what, I watched the tame stamps of the show last time. I think I'll invest my time next time there's a show that that particular person is running. So it's really, really handy to help people get through the content. There's a lot of content out there. Time stamping is a really valuable way to speed up the process. Video editing. After the fact, take the long video, chop it up into smaller pieces. This is something that Scott Scowcroft has been doing. He's called the Scott Treatment. There's other people that are taking videos and slicing and dicing them up based on content. The first three minutes might have been talking about this subject, and then the next five minutes was another subject. Slice that up, and as I'd mentioned before, this is an option if you're doing co-hosting and the one host gets the whole thing and then the other host gets the little snippets and shares those out a little bit at a time. They both have value and when it is sliced up into more digestible pieces that has longer value that can then all point back to the main video again which again to answer the question about which ones do you watch. Well if I can see a nice golden nugget that maybe was five minutes or less of really valuable stuff and I know that it came from a hangout on air there's a good chance I might look to see what the next Hangout on Air is that person's going to do because it's a teaser or a trailer, in essence, for the content, and that'll help you decide what's going to be some of the stuff that you want to watch. That's so, another role to add to your list is the person who does the timestamps. It's a time-consuming thing to timestamp, but we do it for our show every week. Yeah, that's, that, that is the role that I've got in there, the time stamper, and there's people okay. developing businesses around that and we're going to probably see more and more of that coming in the, in the future. There are many things you can do after the show's over and that a lot of people don't realize. You know, they think the promotion beforehand and then the show and then they're done. Well, there is a whole boatload of other things to do after the fact, but many people are getting so busy that they just don't have time to do that. And so I really do see this as an evolution of business opportunity for people to start to come in and say, we can do these things and here's a list and I'm in the process of working through that. Other people are as well. Bringing value to the show after the show is over. Now let's talk about that for a moment. Some of the things, the roles that the film strip guests should play after Hangout on Air is over is they go to the event and they fill in the comments. So then someone in the show was asked a question in the show. They didn't give the full answer. They can go back out and finish up that answer with a comment. Or it's really handy if I have a featured guest. It's an expectation of that guest when they are done to join me in the event after the fact and fill in some of the answers and do some interaction with the non-video guests because we just can't get everything live because you run out of time, just like we're running out of time right now. So I want to thank everyone in the film strip as well as everybody out there, the non-video guests, for being part of this role how, what the roles are for Hangouts on Air. Remember, we will have another one coming up in a little more than a week on the 9th of May, and you might be watching this later, so just go find that video. It's ready for you now. And it's going to be talking about roles people play in HOA, but a little less on just the technical side and more on the social side of what the roles are that you will play. And I want to thank everybody for being here. We're going to end the show now. See you soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.